Cole McAfee has been gardening for two years. He enjoys planting various different plants ranging from sunflowers to peas. He gave us a little look into what his garden was like this year. Hi everyone, I'm Dawn and I'm here with Cole McAfee and he's going to tell us a little bit about his garden and he's in the kids gardening contest. Cole, how old are you? Six. You're six. And how long have you had a garden for, Cole? Two years. Two years, fantastic. Who do you like to garden with? Mom. Your mom and anyone else? My sister. Your sister, excellent. Now Cole, can you tell us a little bit about your garden? What are some of the things that you have in your garden this year? Flowers. Flowers, you've got some petunias <coughs> and some lobelias. What else do you have down there? Peas. Peas and? What are those Sunflowers. Called? Sunflowers, excellent. And you were telling me, what did you have in your garden last year? Cool. Pumpkins and peas. Pumpkins and peas. And what's your favorite to grow? Peas. Peas. How come? Because they're my favorite vegetable. They're your favorite vegetable. Do you like to eat them raw or cooked? Cooked. Cooked. Excellent. Well, Cole, what is your favorite part about having a garden? What do you like to do best when you're gardening? Looking at the flowers. You like looking at the flowers? And is in the springtime or the summer or the fall, what's the best part of that when your flowers are growing? Summer. Summer, how come? Be because we plant them in the spring. Mm-hmm. So you like to watch them grow? Yeah. Oh, and water them? Okay. <coughs> and Cole, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about your garden? What do you what do you do you like to have people come over and look at your gardens? Yeah. You do? <coughs> Who are some of the people who have come over and seen your gardens? People who visit. People who visit? Okay, like your friends? Excellent. Okay, thank you, Cole. Jesse Ray McAfee decided it was time to have her own garden after helping her brother out with his. She's only been gardening for one year, but she is a natural. She told us a little bit about her garden and what she loves about it most. Hello everyone, I'm Dawn and this is Jesse McAfee and Jesse is a brand new gardener. Jesse, how long have you been gardening for? First year. This is your first year? Excellent. And what kind of things do you have in your garden, Jesse? Some flowers. Some flowers. And did I see some tomatoes? Some tomatoes. Excellent. What is your favorite part of gardening, Jesse? Planting. Planting. And did I hear you say too that you like to weed them too? Yeah. You did. Excellent. Now, Jesse, how did you get those sunflowers? You were telling me. From the library. From the library. And how big are your sunflowers? Um, as tall as me. They are as tall as you, aren't they? Excellent. And Jesse, when you garden, who do you like to garden with? Who are some of the people you garden with? Cole. Cole, your brother, and who else? Mama. Your mama. Awesome. Um, who comes to see your garden? You. Me. And your friends? Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything extra that you'd like to tell us about your special garden, Jesse? No. No? Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jesse. Kenzie Herbidell has been inspired by her Nana and her mom to plant and grow her own garden. 
She grows an array of different flowers and herbs as well as her very own fairy garden. We got a chance to talk to Kenzie and ask her a few questions about both of her wonderful gardens. Good morning everyone, I'm Dawn and this is Kenzie Huberdo and she is in the Beautiful Gardens of Chetwin Kids Contest. Kenzie, can you tell us how old are you? I'm six. You're six. And how long have you been gardening for? Mm, a while. A while. Who do you like to garden with? My nan and my mom. Your nan and your mom. And what kind of flowers have you planted this year? Ghost, rosemary and I forget. And is it petunias that petunias. I see also? Yes. Excellent. Which are your favorite flowers? The, petun the purple petunias. The purple petunias. And tell me, do you do you take care of them yourself? Yes. Yeah. Who do you water them with? My mom. Your mama. That is really nice. Mm -hmm. So, what is your favorite thing about gardening? Um, that you get to water them. You like that the best? How mm -hmm. come that's your favorite part? Because I like to see when the water goes into the plant. You do. Excellent. And how big have your plants grown since you first started growing them mm -hmm. this spring? Big. Have they gotten quite big? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and is there anything else that you would like to share about your plants? Nothing. No. Do you pick them and bring them inside? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, oh yes, and we have a fairy garden. Can you tell us about your fairy garden? My fairy garden is with painted bunnies. It's with painted bunnies, and who painted the bunnies? My nana. Oh, nice. How many bunnies are in your fairy garden? A, fe a few. A few? And is this your first year having a fairy garden? Uh, yes. Yes. And tell me, what's your favorite part about a fairy garden? Because you get to put, you get to put them where you want to put them. Oh, because so you get to arrange them. Excellent. And how do you like to arrange your bunnies in your fairy garden? Because arrange. Like, how do you like to put them? I like to put them together. Together. Excellent. And do you have your bunnies named? No. No? They're just part of your beautiful fairy mm -hmm. garden? Excellent. And you love to garden with your Nana, too, don't you? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say about your garden? No. No? Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Ireland Bassendowski is no stranger to gardening or beautiful gardens. Ireland has been gardening since she was young and has fond memories of gardening with her grandparents. She allowed us to see her beautiful greenhouse and we asked her what her secret was to having such a thriving greenhouse. Hello everyone, I'm Dawn and I'm here with Ireland Bassendowski and she's in the Beautiful Gardens of Chetwin contest for the kids division. So, Ireland, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. And how many years have you been gardening for? Um, since I was very little, I always garden. I always used to garden with my grandma and grandpa, and I still do with my grandma. Excellent. They both have beautiful gardens, mm -hmm. don't they? Um, what's your favorite part about gardening? Um, probably planting everything. Planting and watching it grow. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, this is your greenhouse, is that correct, yeah. Ireland? Can you tell us a little bit about the plants and stuff in your greenhouse? Um, I have tomatoes that my grandma grew from seed. I helped my grandma grow them from seed. Wow. And I have cucumbers, lettuce, um, carrots, peas, more carrots. I used to have peppers, but it got attacked by aphids. Oh, yeah. So we had to dig them out. And lavender, strawberries, and kale. Oh, my gosh. That is a beautiful garden. And how long have you been greenhouse gardening? Mm, last year I did it, too, in pots. Excellent, and it's really doing well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and I see you also, you were saying you would like to start a fairy garden, is that true? Yeah, awesome. I've done it for the past two years. I haven't set it out yet, though. Oh my gosh, and what kind of things do you have in your fairy garden when you set it all out? Um, I have a little lake Whoa. and little beach houses. Uh -huh. um, I had Last year I had a Canada Day set up because nice. it was 150th birthday. Excellent. Um, 
So you're always getting new stuff for your fairy garden? Yeah. Excellent. So you're going to have quite a collection. Uh huh. That's wonderful. Um, can you tell me, um, you like to garden with your grandpa and grandma, and so you've learned a lot of things. What are some of the things you've learned about gardening? Uh, that you have to weed. Oh. And that you have to watch for the strawberries so they don't get rotten. Because yeah. my grandma has about 25 of them, and if she doesn't pick them every morning, they'll get all rotten. Holy, every morning. That sounds yeah. awesome. We should go there. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what is your favorite time of year for gardening? So like thinking of the spring, the summer, and the fall, which part do you like best? Mm, probably the summer, because then I get to watch it grow. Because yeah, you're not in school and mm -hmm. not as busy. Excellent. And what will you do with some of the vegetables and stuff that are in your garden? Um, I like to share it with my family, or I like, or my mom and me and my dad really like salad, so mm, I make salads. Nice. Now earlier you were telling me something, uh, I asked you, uh, who takes care of your garden and you said? I do, but mom paid for it. But, but your plants. mom paid for it. That's awesome. <laughs> Excellent. And is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about your garden? Um, well this watering can, me and my grandpa Paul, we would always water it together when I was younger and even to when I was older. And about six months after he passed away I found this in my grandma's garage and I got to keep it and I water it every morning and I refuse to use anything else. Oh my gosh, so there's lots of love and good memories, mm -hmm. memories attached to that watering can. That's very special, Ireland. Well, thank you so much, Ireland. You have a beautiful greenhouse. Thank you. Things look gorgeous. And it sounds like you are one knowledgeable young lady. Thank you very much. R.J. Nichols and his family live out in beautiful Jackfish, a quick drive out of Chetwin. He graciously let us see his growing garden and he answered a few of our questions about his flourishing garden. So hello everyone, I'm Dawn and this is R.J. Nichols and I'm here to interview him about his beautiful garden. R.J., can you tell us what mm. do you have up there? Mm, sunflower. Sunflowers and um, I don't know, onions. And onions? And are there some beautiful petunias up there too? Excellent. Now over there I see something that's really amazing. What else did you do? Mm, potatoes. Potatoes. How many rows of potatoes did you plant? Uh, a hundred. A hundred hills? hills? Holy moly. Okay, and when... Um, now that it's summer, how do you take care of them? Water them. Water them. Do you have to? Yes. Do you have to kill them and hoe them too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you were telling me earlier your favorite part of gardening is what? What do you like to do with those potatoes? Mm -hmm. Digging the potatoes. Awesome. Can you show us with your hands some how big of some of the potatoes you've had in the past? Mm -hmm. Huge. Now, RJ, mm -hmm. you were telling me that you have been gardening since how old? One. Since you were a baby. What were you? What did your mom say she would have? She has pictures of you in. In the your garden. diaper. Diaper. In your diapers gardening. That's awesome. And I understand your grandma's a gardener too. Mm -hmm. Who do you like to garden with, RJ? Mm. What did you tell mom. me? Your mom and? Grr. Grandma. And? Bentley. And Bentley. Awesome. Um, I was going to ask you something else. When do you think you might be digging your first potatoes? What? Soon. Soon. And I see all the chickens have gone, mm -hmm. but do the chickens help you too? No. No? They just eat worms. Just, just that, hey? What else would you like us to know about your garden? Mm. 
Now, well, I'll tell you what, once you pick those potatoes, how do you like to eat them? Mm. Do you like to bake them, french fry them, scallop mm. them? Mm. I don't know. Boil? You like to boil them? Mm -mm. No! Okay, tell us one thing that you just love about gardening. Mm. Dig them up. You like to what? Dig them up. You like to dig them up. Awesome. Okay, thank you, RJ. A place filled with quaint fruit-bearing trees, gorgeous berry bushes, and a homey atmosphere is exactly what Robin Hilderman has accomplished with her gardens. Growing up on a farm, Robin has been gardening all her life. Well, my whole life, I guess, because we grew up on a farm and you had to, right? I hated that. <laughs> had to go weed a ginormous garden. But um, no, I like pretty things around me is more what it's about. Robin believes that planting fruit-bearing trees and berry bushes are essential in anyone's garden. Not only does it help the people in the vicinity, but also our furry friends as well. We used to have a black bear came around here every year. I'm sure somebody got rid of her, which was such a shame. And she broke that tree in half one year, just climbing up on it. So I made my son go up both trees and just throw it all on the ground. She was laying on the ground, pictures. She was just amazing. She was laying on the ground, just belly, legs out. She was just pulling it all in. She was like the laziest thing ever. Robin's garden also contains a few sentimental pieces from her own childhood. A carousel horse her mother painted and a piece of farming equipment. She plans to recreate her mother's garden that she remembers very fondly from her childhood. I used to sit on that as a kid and up and down like a teeter-totter for hours. That was my best find. My brother was out working at that farm and got permission to bring it back. My mom always had a big flower garden around that, so at some point I'll get it there again. Robin has spent time nourishing and caring for her plants. She hand plants and nurtures them into something beautiful. When asked for advice she'd give to up-and-coming gardeners, she not only had great advice, but a simple wish for the future as well just to love it. It's quite a bit of work, but it is so worth it just to have. It is my peace and tranquility. This is my, my happiness, my best space ever. So like it, get a hold of people who have done it for a long time. Most people have plants they need to split up. You can do it for cheap or for free. You know, especially if you want to go perennials, you don't have to be spending tons of money. And I just hope the young people take it up. My kids, they're both in their 30s now, which is not really a kid, but they love gardening. They both love it, and I hope people just continue to... It's worth the work for what you get out of it.
Sherry Chappelle and her mom, Carolyn Burnett, have created a fairy's paradise on Earth, rightly named Fairytopia. Sherry and her mom invited us to see what they believe would be the perfect haven for fairy folk. Both ladies are veterans when it comes to gardening, and we had to ask, what's the most enjoyable thing about gardening? Uh, I enjoy the time um, spent with my family doing it. It's fun um, because usually uh, it's not just time in the garden, placing the plants or flowers or uh, ornaments, but uh, also the time like looking for the ornaments or flowers and, and working on them, you know, in the house over tea or coffee or whatever and just visiting. And, and then also, of course, when we, when we place the items in, in the gardens, uh, that's, it's just always a good time visiting with each other and it's, it's good exercise and it's relaxing and it's just kind of therapeutic, I think, mentally and physically. Uh, I enjoyed working on the figurines, you know, the little fairies. I was looking forward to doing it and then, of course, painting it and seeing them turn out the way we liked. Sherry and Carolyn have entered beautiful gardens before with different gardens. When asked about the fairy garden and why they decided to do something so out of the box, the answer was simple. It was something that allowed them to create something bigger, grander, and more creative than they had before. Um, well, it's new to us. I know, you know, I hear other people talking and like it's becoming more popular and there's you know, again, so many neat ideas and ways you can go about doing a, a fairy garden. Um, and it was in one of the categories for the contest. But for this one, we just thought it's, it's hard to keep it um, small scale or low key when we had this nice garden in this area. And we just thought, why not take advantage of it and spread it out and make it feel like this is the fairy's garden. This is their fairy topia, as we named it. And and this is their whole play area, their whole living quarters. So um, that was fun to be able to spread everything out and give them just this whole playground and backyard to have a, all of their own. So you can kind of see that as you go through it. And yeah, every bit of it was really fun. And uh, I agree with her again. We just enjoyed working together and coming up with new ideas and uh, making sure that the flowers fit, you know, just where the figurines were and what the figurines were doing. Mm -hmm. and, and most of them you can see, you can tell, probably tell the difference, the ones that we made and the ones, the couple that we found and bought along the way. But um, you can see, maybe it's, I don't know if it's your normal fairy garden. Um, we've made these guys kind of live. You might see, you know, some of the same, uh, things that they're doing that you know we might do so they live a lot like humans and maybe not like Tinkerbell <laughs> so to speak so it's really fun that way when you see them. <laughs> the fairytopia Sherry and Carolyn have created has really given fairy folk a place of luxury. Set with a fountain, feasts, and plenty of hiding places this fairy wonderland gives Neverland a run for its money. Now, if you're thinking about creating a garden but don't know where to start, don't worry. Sherry and Carolyn have just the tips to get you creating in no time. Oh, uh, something that kind of comes to mind is, uh, you know, everybody's got their talents and likes and interests, and, and it's a fun way to incorporate that into your garden. Um, you know, you might not think you're artistic, but what's fun about whether it's vegetables or herbs or, or flowers that you're into, or maybe all of them, you can you can bring them all together. And then just um, like I mentioned with outdoor living, if it's little figurines or something that you want to make or that you find that you like, even a personal belonging, just anything personal, you can always incorporate that somehow, find a way um, or ask other gardeners uh, or friends or look online. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, but there's so much um, interesting and good tips as well online or that other people and gardeners have. So it's fun talking about it and it can be so exciting. The feedback you could get and the ideas that you get, it's like, oh my goodness, so many neat ideas. <laughs> and 
I enjoy just helping my daughter with the garden and thinking up new ideas and everything. It's a big help. <laughs> If you've been downtown Chetwin, you have seen Ty Hoover and Lori Simpson's magnificent garden. With a variety of flowers and plants, it's clear to see that this garden isn't an easy thing to keep up. But for Ty, it's worth it for his grandma's legacy. He gave us a little background on his history with the garden and how he ended up in our little community. Hi. Good day, my name is Ty Hoover. Welcome to Claris and Manfred Austin's house. I bought it off my grandparents and it's been in the family uh, probably 50 years now. Uh, moved from Dawson Creek. My mom moved us out here and we started the Chetwin Department Store in 65. I was born in Dawson. A year later I moved to Chetwin so that makes it oh, 53 years for me living in Chetwin. I'm a lifer. I love this place. Ty and Lori's garden seems like the perfect paradise, exploding with unique and wonderful colors and smells. With a garden like this, how can you pick just one favorite? For Ty, the answer is quite simple. Oh, my favorite flower has got to be the rose bushes because they're my grandma. She, you can see them across the street and a few places around town that the same rose bushes were given around from the ladies, Mrs. Weeks. Uh, I believe has some, there's some downtown in the rodeo grounds, but every time I see them, I know that they come from the same ladies group. And my grandma and Mrs. Weeks and Mrs. Wilson. Laurie has added a special touch in the garden as well. She pickles her own cucumbers and wanted the garden to have some poppies. At first, Ty was against it, but is happy that they did eventually add the poppy to their garden. Oh, <laughs> Lori's are the poppies. The first year I wouldn't let her buy seeds for poppies because uh, I've seen them in gardens and grow. They come up every year and they're, they, uh, you know, kind of aren't wanted, but we keep them in boxes and the poppies are, I'll have to say, pretty nice. Pretty. BC is known to grow a variety of plants, ranging from roses to apple trees. Ty explained how BC is a unique place in Canada because it features over 16 geoclimatic zones. Uh, BC has 16 biogeoclimatic zones, from deserts to tundra to the alpine, and each in between has a different uh, zone. I learned this guy from a guy from Nova Scotia that uh, did his thesis in UBC and his professor didn't even know that, so he got an A+. Plus. So I had to write that down. BC has 16 biogeoclimatic zones from full-fledged desert to uh, tundra in the north. So prairies, mountains, and everything in between. It's pretty, pretty cool place to live because some countries have one or two. We have 16 from rainforests to it's, it's just amazing. I, my mother asked me, why don't you go traveling around the world? Well, I talked to a lady from the Netherlands and she said, I drove from Vancouver to Fort St. John for a job and it was 13 hours and my parents in the Netherlands asked me, what province are you in now? And <laughs> she said the same one. In uh, the Netherlands, if they drive 13 hours, they can be into Russia, she said. So it's pretty cool cool place. The biodiversity of uh, British Columbia is just awesome. Seeing a garden as grand as Ty and Lori's can be intimidating, but Ty's advice to new gardeners is just don't be afraid to try new things and make mistakes. Anyhow, just keep trying. <laughs> if, if there's any advice, uh, don't be worried about making a mistake because it, it's all flowers in the end. <laughs> yeah, you can't lose. So just grow it up. <laughs> 